Eli. Welcome back, everybody, to the second day of FSM2. The goal of my presentation today is to introduce you to Sondag, tell you a little bit about the work we do, who we are, and some of our thoughts on managing your everyday shift. So first of all, I'd like to say it's really a pleasure to be back here in South Africa. It's really one of my favorite places for conducting field work. This was a, a work I did a few years ago on on-site sanitation in Kruger Park. Urine diversion and on site sanitation. <laughs> but in reality, we know we're not here to talk about Kruger Park. We're here to talk about this shit that's not working. So, historically, waterborne sewage based systems have been seen as the most viable long term solution to fill sanitation needs. But this is obviously not working, and we see evidence of this everywhere. This picture is from Yaoundé, Cameroon. It's a city of 2.5 million people where there's not a single functioning wastewater treatment plant. So about 10 or 15 years ago, people all over the world started to talk about how on-site or decentralized technologies could actually be more sustainable than centralized option. And the current reality is that billions of people in Africa, Asia, and Latin America are served by this type of on-site systems. So the management of the fecal sludge from the systems is going to remain an ongoing issue in the future. So on-site technologies maybe could be the most sustainable, but that's not the current reality right now. And we need to think about the entire service chain. So with wastewater treatment, if someone flushes a toilet, the waste is transported in the sewer, goes to a wastewater treatment plant, there's someone there 24-7 to manage the system if it's working properly. But fecal sludge management is actually more about interactions among each stakeholder in the chain. So from the household level user, who empties their system, who transports that fecal sludge, how it's treated, and the final end use and disposal option. So what happens when the pits are full? This is a great question and it was the title of last year's conference. So although we're thinking about how on-site or decentralized could be the most sustainable, it's currently not the reality. And the current reality is that fecal sludge mostly just ends up directly into the environment. And this is for a number of reasons where leaks are broken in the service chain. So for example, maybe the household level user can't afford the fee for a company to come empty their system. If there is a company, maybe they can't access the system. If those two things do happen, then can the company even afford to drive the sludge across town to a treatment facility, if a treatment facility is even existing? So as a result, raw sludge is pervasive in the environment. So even if access to improved systems are being provided, we're obviously not achieving sanitation under these conditions. And there's just a couple of pictures. The one on the top left is from the car where the household user just dug a hole in the street and emptied their system there. Even though you can see that it's a really high water table, they're standing water from the previous day's rain. The next picture is a guy actually inside the septic tank emptying it. Then down below is in Accra, Lavender Hill, where any sludge that is legally dumped actually just goes directly into the environment. And then another picture from Cameroon. So what's missing? So obviously the approach to fulfill sanitation goals is not just coming into a city and building a bunch of on-site technologies. We need to think about, specifically when we're thinking about technology, we need to first think where the sludge is going to end up. What is the end use, the final end use or end goal for treatment? So if, when we're designing technology, if we think about our client or stakeholder needs and these final end use or disposal options, and then we work backwards considering design variables to arrive at a solution. And there's just two things that I want to say about designing for end use. The first is that we need to achieve the appropriate level of treatment. So we don't want to over-design systems and waste a lot of money, but we also don't want to under-design systems and not provide adequate human health protection. So just as an example, if we were using fecal sludge as a soil amendment on crops that were directly consumed, this is a much different end use than if we're using fecal sludge as dried pellets for co-combustion and fuel. So the exposure pathways are much different 
but also the client's demand of what they want for the final end product is really different, and they require different technologies. Another important aspect is resource recovery. So we can consider sludge as a disposal problem, or we can consider it as an opportunity for resource recovery. And since we live in a, a world of finite resources, I really think it's our responsibility to try to maximize water, energy, and nutrient efficiency. So if we try to think about and identify market demand for end products, it can help to drive the entire service chain. But even if the amount of money that's gained from the end use isn't enormous, the cost savings that can be provided by preventing the cost of hauling the sludge off-site and having to pay to dispose of it can be quite significant. Okay, so I just want to emphasize here, do not get me wrong, this last slide was about technology, and fecal sludge management is definitely not about technology. It's about managing these interactions at every way and at every step, and if we, we can't consider technology outside of this context. So this here is an example of a service chain that is functioning. We have a household level user, they can afford to get their pits empty. There's a company that comes and does it safely and regularly. It's profitable for the company to drive it across town and deliver it at a treatment plant. There is a treatment plant that exists, so it's not just getting dumped in the environment. And then there's a safe reuse option of the treatment byproducts. There's an adequate tariff structure in place so the whole thing's financially flowing correctly. There's advocacy, capacity development, regulatory enforcement, et cetera. So it's important to look at each functional group separately and individually and think about how we can optimize steps at each level, but most importantly, to think about how they all go together. So for example, when we look at things separately, if we want to improve collection, we could think about Steve Sugden's gulper. If we want to improve transport, we could think about Dulai's vision of a truck that can achieve liquid solid separation on site and thereby greatly increase the efficiency of transport. Here in KwaZulu Natal, we might want to think about how we can influence attitude and usage. For example, everything in addition to feces ends up in the UDDTs. So, but the point was, these are looking at things separately, we want to think how do they all go together. So again, if we go back to end use and marketable end uses as an example of how it can interact at every level in the chain. So if we have a marketable end use and a demand, then the collection and transport company could pretend, potentially drop their sledge off for an incentive or even for free and not have to pay a price. That could then be transferred back to the household level user who could have a reduction in the fee they pay and thereby be able to afford to get their system empty and increasing access to sanitation. Having a market demand can also ensure that the treatment plant operator is operating their plant effectively because they have a market demand to meet. It also ensures that the sledge is not going into the environment but we also need to consider other parts of the chain, such as regulatory concerns, socially acceptable, financially viable, etc. So research is needed at all these different steps, but what's most lacking is how it all comes together, and to really think when we're designing that we're not just designing for technology. So what are design variables in a fecal sludge management chain? They're very complex. It can be anything from stakeholder needs, social and cultural preferences, financial flows, economic situation, policies, regulatory environment, gender issues, business models, all these things that we've been talking about the last day. What else? There's an, any number we could list. So then, once we have identified all of these variables that we need to consider, then we can start to consider solutions. So then we have our problem scoping, developing alternative solutions, and our project realization. Project realization is where you solve the problem and communicate the results. So okay, that seemed like a really simple solution, but obviously it was just an example to illustrate an engineering design approach. And the world that we live in is much more complex than that. 
But the point was just that we need to really think about how to integrate all these things into one model in real life. And consider that we not only have a 100-year gap on research knowledge in wastewater, but we're talking about a system that's much more complicated to manage. So how do we fill those research or those knowledge gaps? Hopefully research, and hopefully that's why a lot of us are here today. But if we think about what a huge worldwide problem there is, this is, there's still really only a handful of people working in this field. There's billions of people using the, the systems. And then obviously the field is growing rapidly, as shown by all of you here today. It's also um, showing that it's gaining an acknowledgement by places such as Dakar, Senegal, or Ouagadougou and Burkina Faso, the National Sanitation Utilities acknowledging that now they need to include fecal sludge management as part of their urban planning. So tested information is becoming more and more available through pilot scale and full scale implementations throughout the service chain, but research and practice are obviously still not up to speed. So we need to take it from research to reality, and we need to ensure this is not just an academic exercise. So we we'll continue to work hard, but try to be as innovative and open-minded as possible, because we really have no idea what the solution is actually going to look like. So now I want to transition and tell you just a little bit about who Sondek is. So fecal sludge management at Sondek started almost 20 years ago. And we've worked with many, many people that are actually here today. So many that I'm not even going to try to attempt to say names. And the success of Sondek has been based on all of these collaborative research partnerships. The program started with Martin Strauss who did a lot of initial work with characterization, settling tanks, drying beds. He worked with Tom Marat at AIT on planted drying beds. Then he was joined by Dulai. And then Dulai took over the program and ran the program. And one of the great accomplishments I think Dulai did, I said one of because there's many, was establish a really strong research program in West Africa. So we worked with Yves Kenye on planted drying beds in Cameroon. He worked with Mbaye and Begare and Onas in Dakar, Senegal. He worked with Onea in Burkina Faso. Then a couple years ago, I took over the program from Dulai, and I put these big shoes here because I think both of these guys left me really big shoes to fill. So I'm just going to take a minute to explain actually what Sondek is, because there seems to be a lot of confusion about what Sondek and Eolag is. So ETH is the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. So that's basically a university focused in science and engineering. And they have two campuses, ETH in Zurich and EPF in Lausanne. And they have different acronyms only because one's from the German speaking part and one is from the French speaking part. They also have four parallel research institutes. And EABOG is one of these research institutes. And AABOG is the Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology. So there's 12 departments within AABOG, all focused on some type of aquatic science. So drinking water, wastewater, microbiology, environmental chemistry, natural water resources. And of these 12 departments, SONDEC is one of the departments. Then within SONDEC, there's five groups. So we have a solid municipal waste group, Drinking Water, Planning, SOTUS, and the Excreta and Wastewater Management Group, which is my group where the fecal sludge management research takes place. I just wanted to touch on some of our key publications. Um, this is the Sondek News. It's available annually, and it's a great way to stay up to date on our current research activities. I included it on the website just because I wanted to emphasize that it is for free on the website, and all archived editions are there. And you can also subscribe to it via the uh, website. The Compendium of Sanitation Systems and Technologies, which has now been um, written in five languages, English, Spanish, French, Vietnamese, and Nepali, also for free via the SADEC website, and also hard copies are available for purchase from the website. One of the innovative things about the compendium is really the systems level approach. So it comprehensively covers sanitation technologies and how they fit into each of the functional groups 
from user interface all the way to final end use or disposal, and how they can all go together to form comprehensive, complete systems. And it was made this way to address the fact that typically in the past, at least one functional group has been left out in the planning process. This is a seven-step planning approach, clues or community-led environmental sanitation planning. It's for implementation of environmental sanitation infrastructure and services in disenfranchised urban and peri-urban communities. This was one of our publications, and I included it here because for me it was really exciting that a top environmental engineering journal will publish articles on fecal sludge management. And for me it shows how our field is growing and gaining acceptance. So the paper was comparing operating costs of fecal sludge management and sewer-based systems. And ana through analyzing the scale of treatment, level of centralization, and logistics of transport, it's key to help us to um, develop innovative approaches for infrastructure needs and even to optimize and expand existing infrastructures. So the conclusion of the paper was that fecal sludge management can provide an affordable solution to sanitation whereas sewer-based systems, as we know, are typically prohibitively expensive. This is our next publication coming out. It's due in June, fingers crossed. Fecal Sledge Management, a Systems Approach for Implementation and Operation. This is uh, co-edited between Sondek and UNESCO IAG and will be available as a free PDF download on our website and also available for purchase through the IWA website as a hardcover textbook. Again, here are the editors and authors. You can see we have a lot of people contributing. Again, we have the systems-based approach. And so we broke the book into three separate sections, treatment, planning, and management. And we talk about how all three of them interlink and go together and need to be considered at the same time for <laughs> systems level implementation. So now I'd just like to close the rest of my presentation telling you briefly about some of the current research that is happening at Sondag. And I'm just gonna provide a little bit of a teaser because each project that I talk about actually has a separate section that's covered um, somewhere else at the conference. And so I'll direct you to those presentations. So currently the research that we're doing falls under this vision where we have optimization of treatment technologies and innovation in resource recovery. So if we can come up with new innovative end uses for treatment products, how can we have treatment that meets those needs or optimize existing treatment and vice versa? Then we also think about how these things can be implemented in the systems level approach. So scaling and logistics, centralization versus decentralization, financial flows, business models, et cetera. So the first project I'll talk about is FAME, or Fecal Management Enterprises. We like to spend a lot of time coming up with good acronyms at Zondek. So this project is six partners in five countries, myself in Senegal, Seydou Nyang from Dakar University, Papasama Diop from the National Sanitation Utility of Senegal, Ashley Murray of Waste Enterprises in Ghana, Charles Niwagaba from Mercury University in Uganda, and Gerald Eder from Austria in Hydrofell. So we have three parallel studies in Senegal, Ghana, and Uganda. And the first thing that we've completed is a market demand study to try to identify innovative new end uses for treatment products. The second thing we did was a calorific value study in each country. And the point of this was to see if we could use dried fecal sludge as a fuel and coal combustion in industrial processes. Third is a financial flow model for the collection and transport companies. This is currently happening in Dakar and next year will be replicated in Uganda and Ghana. In addition, we have a pilot scale facility for research um, in Senegal and industrial implementation. So again, I'm not going to spend time on the results, but I want to say that Teddy Nakato is from Macquarie University will be presenting our calorific value results tomorrow morning. Something worth noting was that fecal sledge from all three of the countries and multiple different sources had surprisingly similar calorific values. So this is very promising for use as co-combustion. 
Market Demand, again, Swaid Semiyaga from Makarari University will be presenting these results tomorrow morning. <clears throat> he identified that currently in Kampala, there's a huge demand for alternative biofuel. So it seems like we could readily tap into this market with fecal sludge. And also was important to note that we need to consider market demands separately in each context because there's so many things that affect the market and, and change it from location to location. This is our pilot scale facility at Onas where a student is using greenhouses to try to maximize the drying of fecal sludge. Seydun Yang from Dakar University was supposed to present this tomorrow morning, but he had a last minute visa issue and so I'll be giving his presentation for him. We're also working with an industry that regenerates waste oil and potentially using fecal sludge for co-combustion. And we're collaborating with the local Chas Polytechnical College also in Senegal to work on this. Resource recovery and reuse. We have five partners working in four project cities. We're working with EMI, the International Water Management Institute, WHO, and then AAVOG, Swiss TPH, and SAVOS. And some of the overall goals and objectives, there's, <clears throat> excuse me, a component led by EMI that's looking at to increase the recovery of water, nutrients, organic matter, and energy from waste streams through the implementation of economically viable business models. And the WHO component is looking at safeguarding public health and the reuse of wastewater, excreta, and gray water to protect vulnerable groups and associated health risks. So the feasibility of these models and plans will be tested in Lima, Kampala, Bangalore, and Hanoi. And yesterday, Lars Schopitz uh, presented some of our preliminary business model results. And later in the same session, Thorax and Stenstrom will be talking about sanitation safety plans. We've turned all of our projects into CAR under the name DAR for, for Waste to Resource. It's led by Sadie Nyong in collaboration with myself and Mbaye and Bagheri. And we currently have four PhD students. Jean Baranganin, looking at sustainable sanitation key structures. El Haji Mamadou Sonko, who's looking at planted drying beds. Al San Sek is looking at unplanted drying beds and use fecal sludge as a fuel as part of the same project. And Amadou Gay, who's working on planted drying beds and fodder plants. And again, results from all four of these studies will be presented tomorrow morning in Seydou's presentation. We have a project in Burkina Faso that's um, led up by Chanda and Magali Bassan. It's a collaborative partnership in fecal sludge management working with the National Sanitation Utility, ONEA. So it's implementing a service chain approach for three planned fecal sludge treatment plants in Ouagadougou, and then seeing how these outputs can be transferable to Bobo and to other cities throughout Burkina Faso. So again, tomorrow morning, Tedwaki Chanda and Magali Basan will be presenting results from this project. And finally, the last project I'll introduce is Partnership for Urban Resource Recovery, or POR. And this project is actually just getting started in January and will be for, for Mogali's PhD. So here, there's a development project that has a goal of 70 to 80% coverage to the sewer, but we're looking at the remaining 20 to 30% of the population that will still be served by on-site technologies. And how can the fecal sludge from these systems be co-managed with the centralized sludge to actually provide 100% access to sanitation. So we're working with Vietan Yen from Hanoi University of Civil Engineering, and we'll have a pilot-scale anaerobic co-digestion facility in Bac Ninh, but we're working all together in five project cities, and we'll be developing a management plan for sludge management for each of the cities. So I just want to end my presentation today with um, just to go over a few of my conclusions. One, the importance of designing for the final end use or disposal option so we don't over-design systems and waste resources or under-design them and not provide proper human health protection. To remember it's not just about technology, it's about managing interactions among people at each step. Also, I think we all know there's no magic wand. Improvements are there and they're being made, but we obviously have a lot to catch up on. And when we think about how many people are really working on fecal sludge compared to billions of people using 
on-site technologies. It's really, really a small amount. So the point is we still have really have an uphill battle, and we all know that shit doesn't flow uphill. So it's really a challenge that we have to be up to meet the needs. We need to come together and continue to move our field forward based on sound scientific evidence. And with that, I'd just like to close my presentation by saying thank you to all of Sondek's collaborative research project partners. Thank you.